Hi everybody, this is Anne. Everyone has their own way of going about decorating their pottery. For me, I tend to concentrate on designing the outer body of the piece first. I then consider the rest of the form to echo that decoration. In this video, we're going to turn our designing process upside down. I'm going to demonstrate five ways to design the bottoms of cups. Then I'll show you how those designs inspired me to decorate the rest of the piece. And here's the cup for the first project. I threw this on the wheel and let it dry to the bone dry stage. For the aesthetics of the first project, I recommend beveling the edge around the foot with the pointed wooden tool before wiring it off, as this tends to highlight the design. I'm using auto detailing tape about an eighth of an inch wide. I centered the cup on my banding wheel and used the lines on the head to divide the foot into thirds. I stretched the tape across the foot to connect each mark as I stuck the tape down to the clay. I continued this until I had a triangle of tape. I marked the center of these three sides around the cup's edge and again stretched the tape across the clay to create a six-sided star. Again, I marked the center of each of those sides and stretched the tape to connect every other dot. I continued connecting the dots until I had a series of four interlocking triangles across the bottom. Next I added some color. I'm starting with the jet black. I simply took a lightly damp sponge and dipped the edge of it into the underglaze on the lid. I tested the sponge on the table to make sure the underglaze wasn't too wet so the color would come out as a blob. When the color was dry enough and I could see the sponge texture, I began sponging it around the taped areas until I had the edge covered. I switched to the intense yellow. I repeated the same process, this time I just sponged the very edge of the black. When the underglaze was dry, I peeled the tape away to reveal this spirograph design. Jim thinks it looks like a bumblebee's waggle dance. To finish this off, I simply took a clean damp sponge and wiped it around the beveled edge. Here's one I made earlier where I used bright red and the intense yellow. To accentuate that geometric design on the bottom, I carved a geometric band around the bottom edge of the body, lining up the triangles to flow from the bottom sponge design. To echo the design on the bottom, I decided to paint bees buzzing around the flowers on the body of the cup. For this next project, I used various sized round teaspoons that can be found in most any grocery store. Starting with the half teaspoon, I simply placed a piece of plastic wrap over the spoon, then a small ball of clay over that. I pressed it firmly with my thumb. I then turned the spoon over on top of the plastic on the table. With one hand, I pushed down on the spoon. With the other, I rotated the spoon back and forth. This cuts the excess clay away from the edges. When I pulled the spoon away and peeled back the plastic, I had a perfect half circle. When I pinched the sides down to a point, I got a nice petal shape. I repeated this process six times. Switching to the eighth teaspoon, I created one of those half circles. Let's attach them. I centered a leather hard cup on my banding wheel and found the center of the bottom. I scored and slipped both the cup and the bottom of the eighth inch circle. I firmly attached them making sure the edges were sealed together. I want to divide the cup into sixths, so I used a trimming spinner with division marks on the edge. I placed the spinner over the center, then marked the cup at each red line. For the first petal, I scored the bottom of it and the area on the bottom of the cup where the marks were. I slipped the petal and attached it towards the edge of the cup. I repeated this process for each petal. I 
represented the center with the blunt end of a paintbrush. This gave me a flower shape. When I turned it over, the cup now has a nice raised foot. I was careful to turn it around on the banding wheel and make sure each of the feet were touching the floor so there's no wobble. You may have to press down on the cup a bit to create stability. Here's one I made earlier. You can see that I decided to echo the petals on the bottom with a band of slip trailing on the side. You can see that I continued with the slip decorations to create another band at the bottom and the poppies all around for this cute cup. Let's experiment with attaching a slab to the bottom of the cup. I rolled out a quarter inch slab and ribbed it. It's wider than the cup bottom. I placed the slab on a piece of plastic wrap to avoid sticking. I looked around for a small circular object and found the cap of my extruder tool. A bottle cap will work too. I lightly impressed that into the clay center. I took a bamboo skewer that I found at the grocery store and laid it down with the pointed end toward the circle and lightly impressed that into the clay. I repeated that at the south end of the circle, then east, then west. I then continued making marks at each division around the circle until I had the look I wanted. It's important that the dryness of the cup be on the moisture side of leather hard for this next step. First I needed to decide which part of the design that I wanted to capture. I decided to offset the impressed circle, so I placed the mug down where I wanted it. I lightly traced around the cup. I cut out the circle using an X-Acto knife and removed the excess clay. I doubled the plastic wrap over the top of the slab and gently worked the edges so they were rounded. I scored the entire bottom of the cup and the slab. I slipped the cup, then attached the slab to the bottom. I made sure to work the seam together so they were sealed. Now here's one I made earlier. To echo the impressed bottom, I decided to carve a banded design around the top edge. As you can see, I worked another carved edge along the bottom part of the body, then painted these sweet little bees in the center. Let's switch to the wheel for this one. Earlier I threw a cup, leaving 3 8 inches of clay along the bottom. I let that dry to leather hard. I centered it onto the wheel and attached it with clay lugs. You can see that the edge of the foot has a sharp beveled edge. I started by trimming that away so the edge is rounded over and blunted. I trimmed a recessed circle in the center of the bottom with a flat carving tool. I was careful to remove a little clay at a time so I didn't get too thin. If you want to see more detail about trimming mugs, check out the link above. I used a pencil to mark a line around the outer edge. I also defined the center of the cup. I used the trimming spinner along the green lines to divide the foot into eighths. I'll 
be using the Diamond Core X3. It has a clunky looking head, but it makes nice beveled cuts. Starting at the edge of the carved circle, I positioned the carver and pulled it down over the edge until I got to the pencil mark. As the tool goes over the edge, it widens the carved area, then narrows it back down. I used a damp sponge to soften all the edges. I then marked a line just out from the carved circle. Starting at this mark, I again carved between each of the previous marks over the edge like before. I softened the edges with a damp sponge, this time also removing the pencil lines. It looks like cut glass to me. Here's a cup I made earlier. Using the carvings as my inspiration, I created a carved band along the center of the cup. I then accented those carvings with painted hummingbirds and bees. On the bottom, I painted my mark and added some divots from the end of a paintbrush. Here it is all glazed and fired. I love when I can turn over a piece of pottery and there's a surprise design on the bottom. Finally, I'll carve a design into the bottom. Again, I left 3 eighths inches of clay when I threw it and let it dry to leather hard. I centered it onto the bat and secured it with clay lugs. I divided it into eighths and drew a circle around the center about a half inch wide. I connected the circle to each mark and then to the outer edge all the way around. I drew lines from the circle at the tip of one line, then curved it to the top of the line next to it. I continued this all the way around. I added curved petals in between each of these. Finally, I connected each of those petals to the outer edge. I used the Diamond Core P27 carving tool for the next step. It has a beveled blade which makes a nice contour. I began by carving each of the curved lines with the beveled edge of the tool facing outward. I flipped the beveled edge of the tool over and carved the straight lines. I then carved the inner petals. I remembered to flip the tool, always pointing that beveled edge of the tool towards the outer edge of the cup so my carving would accent each petal. I cut along the straight lines using the V-shaped tip of the tool. Finally, I cut around the center line. I softened up the edges with a damp sponge. For some highlights into each leaf, I used the P12, which has a finer tip. I just cut straight lines into each petal. Here's one I carved earlier. I was again inspired by both the carving and the flower theme, so I carved a band of leaf shapes along the bottom edge, then topped that with painted dahlias, hummingbirds, and bees. I painted my mark in the center of the bottom. I just had to glaze it with a white liner glaze around each image, then chamois glaze over the carved band of leaves. 
Using that reversed way to decorate my cups helped me to think outside the box from the way I usually approach my work. I hope to do more of these thinking from the bottom up. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.